channel. Today I have a couple super cute affordable DIYs and they are so affordable because they are from the dollar store. That means that you can find these items for just a couple dollars, put them together and make them into decor pieces that are so cute and look so much more expensive than they actually are. Without further ado, let's get started. I know that every dollar store that I've been to, no matter what the brand, carries some sort of doormat that looks more or less like the one that I found. And it is just super plain and not very pretty. And you wouldn't really want that in your house as is. So I found a doormat that is sold at Urban Outfitters. It's super expensive, but it looks so cute. And it is kind of like more on the boho theme, which is really what I'm going for in my new apartment. Let's get started. Okay, so as you just saw, this is the $2 doormat from the dollar store, and then I'm just grabbing a piece of chalk also from the dollar store. I'm drawing out the design for the sun. It doesn't need to be perfect because, listen guys, this is chalk. The best part about it is if you make a mistake, you can just wet that section and get rid of the chalk right then and there, and that's why chalk is such a good thing to draw outlines with. So I'm just starting off, I'm drawing five arches for the bottom section and then I'm going ahead and I'm drawing 10 lines out to the side and that's what they did in the initial doormat as well. I did test doing more than 10 lines and it looked a little bit funny so I'd recommend staying around that number. Next I'm just grabbing some jute rope and once again this is from the dollar store which I love because this whole DIY is from the dollar store and I'm also grabbing my hot glue gun which I guess isn't from the dollar store but the hot glue is. <laughs> so I'm just using some hot glue to go over the chalk design line by line sticking down the jute rope. You really only want to take this section by section so that you can stick down the rope while the glue is still hot. Also I measured out each piece of the jute rope to the right size to make this process a little bit easier and faster so I made it to size before gluing it on instead of gluing it on and then cutting it afterwards and I really found that to be the best way to do it. Next I'm actually adding an extra arch right above the top one to make the edges of those sun rays more finished and more put together. And then finally I'm adding rope all around the edge of the mat just to finish it all off and make the edges really look refined. And voila, the sun rays doormat is complete. How cute is this, you guys? Guys, I cannot believe how cute that DIY turned out. I absolutely love it to bits. It's right at my front door. It's so cute. It's perfect with some little pairs of shoes on there. And honestly, it just fits the whole vibe that I'm going for. So the next DIY that I have for you is so easy, so easy, so affordable. Once again, all the items from the dollar store. And um, it just, you're just you're just gonna have to see basically I was roaming the aisles of the dollar store trying to think of cool ideas and I saw this cool two dollar loofah and light bulbs were just going off in my head and I knew this was gonna work out I hope you like this one I'm gonna show you how to do it right now So I found this amazing back scrubber loofah for just $2 and what is amazing about it is actually the natural fiber netting that they had around the sponge. This is meant to exfoliate but clearly I have some other ideas here. In case you're interested, this netting is actually made out of a plant called sisal and I figured that out by googling about 500 different things since I had never heard of sisal before but it is such a pretty natural fiber. Anyway, as you can see here, the netting is tied off at the bottom of the sponge and so I'm just untying it, which is a minor struggle with my long nails, but once I've undone it, I'm just taking the netting off the sponge, being careful not to pull that string that I just untied out from any of the loops because that would make the whole netting come undone. And fun fact, I actually accidentally did that and had to use a tweezer to re-thread several of the loops. That was not ideal, so just be careful with that. Next, I just grabbed a simple glass vase. This one was actually from the dollar store and was one of the ones that I used at my wedding. I'm just going ahead and flipping the netting onto the vase. 
I actually tried a shorter but wider vase and it wouldn't fit on easily, but I had this vase on hand and it worked out perfectly. I also just really, really like how far up the netting goes, so it just looks great. I pulled the netting up as far as it could go on the vase and then I went ahead and just tied those strings into a simple knot. I tried to tie the knot quite tight and then I took my scissors and just trimmed the excess string on either side. I also went ahead and trimmed off any of the loose fibers that were on the netting overall. To make sure that the knot didn't come undone, I just added a little bit of hot glue over the knot and then I went ahead and added some hot glue all around the top, just a few dots here and there to make sure that the netting wasn't going to move. And I love, love, love how boho chic that this turned out. It has such perfect texture and a really nice neutral color as well. I'm gonna have this out on display for sure. And the best part about this, in my opinion, just how easy that was, I think that just speaks to the fact that you can go around and look for affordable items and transform them into something so pretty with it being so easy to do. So if you like that one, let me know down below. This next DIY up, I am so excited for. I feel like I say that every time, but honestly, I'm so excited for this one because I just thought it was such a good idea and so affordable once again and just everything about it just comes together so beautifully and I love when that happens. For this DIY, I'm basically turning some super cheap baskets into such a statement pendant light. It's gotta be one of my favorites. So let's get started with that tutorial. So I picked up three baskets from the dollar store. I'm setting aside one basket and for the other two, I'm flipping them over and removing the bottoms. But here's the thing, I actually need to reuse the bottom material for one of the baskets. So I'm actually unweaving the bottom instead of cutting it. Now I just needed to do this for one basket, but honestly, this was a laborious process. It maybe took me 30 minutes to complete. It was a lot of over under over under and just like trying to get it unweaved it actually gave me a lot of appreciation for people who do basket weaving like that is a talent once i'm done unweaving the bottom of one basket i'm just going to set that aside and you can see here this is kind of the string material that i'm left with for the other basket i just need to cut out the bottom surprisingly the material was actually kind of hard to cut which is good because you know that it's strong and it's gonna hold up. So as you can see here, the bottom's removed out of the two baskets and I'm just placing one basket upside down and the other one right side up, lining up the ridges on the side. Then I'm just going ahead and adding a line of hot glue all the way around and sticking them together. After that dried, I went back over the sides with more hot glue to just really make sure that it was super sturdy and wasn't gonna fall apart on me. And then I covered up the seams with the leftover string from the bottom. Now I'm just grabbing the third basket with the bottom still intact. For this, I'm placing it on top upside down and I decided to actually remove the string that's along the edges of both baskets, right where that seam is. I actually wasn't going to do this initially, but I tested out how it would look both ways and I definitely like it better with it removed. Then I went ahead and I applied hot glue around the rim and stuck the top basket on. And then once again, just to make sure that it was super stuck together, I added more hot glue along the sides. After the glue was dry, I just went ahead and covered the whole seam with that leftover string. You know the drill, wrapping it around, securing it with hot glue. And this time I had to wrap it around about three times to really cover up that seam. And now it's time for me to actually turn this into a light. I went ahead and got a $6 plug-in light from Ikea, which as you can see has a switch on it and a plug. You can just plug it into the wall. It's super, super easy to work with. I found the center of the pendant light and threaded the plug up through the bottom of the weave of the basket. I really wanted to make sure that the light would hang near the bottom indent, as you can see here. So I left a couple inches of slack on the cord instead of pulling it tight to the top. I then went ahead and hot glued the cord to the top of the pendant light and honestly I applied probably five layers of hot glue to make sure this wasn't going anywhere. I waited for each layer to dry and then I applied more hot glue and then another way I also added support was by adding hot glue about half of an inch all the way around the cord just onto the straw strings that the weight was actually being kind of equally distributed amongst that area instead of just pulling on two or three of the strands. Then when it comes to hanging the light, I took a super simple screw and hook and screwed it into the ceiling and voila, the boho pendant light is complete. I know I sound a 
bit like a broken record here, but I just love all those DIYs. I really feel like they came together so beautifully. I think sometimes when you do DIYs, you're like, hmm, this is a little bit of a crappy job, or, you know, I wish this could be just like a little bit more professional, but honestly, all of these turned out so nice. So let me know down below which of these DIYs was your favorite. If you like this video, which I hope you did, then please give it a like down below. Let the YouTube algorithm know that it's a good video to watch. You can also subscribe to me on this YouTube channel if you're not already, and I hope that you are. Or check me out on Instagram, I'm at DIYDahlia with an underscore at the end. And I just wanna add a disclaimer. So I'm at almost 2,200 followers on Instagram. I know that that sounds low, but that was an accomplishment for me. Honestly, hitting 1,000 was an accomplishment, 2,000 was an accomplishment. But I think one of the big differences that I'm gonna make with regards to my Instagram is I'm gonna change it from being more focused on me to being more focused on um, DIYs and the decor pieces and the projects that I actually do. I really struggled with that before because of the actual space I was in. I felt like I couldn't capture um, the type of decor and imagery and aesthetic that was aligned with what I wanted in my head because the floors were dark, the cabinetry was like black marble, like it was just a different style. In this apartment, I really feel like I have the whole baseline and platform to be able to do that. So that's one big change I'm gonna be able, to, I'm gonna be doing, and I'm hoping that that's gonna make it even better content for you guys. I of course will be posting a little bit of myself as well, and I always update you guys in Instagram stories and stuff too. But I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. So thank you so much for watching once again. Until next time, you guys. Bye.